and welcome back to the channel. This is Thomas Goes Nostalgic, and on this episode, we're going to be taking trash and turning it into ancient ruined columns. And once again, welcome back to the channel. This is Thomas Goes Nostalgic, and on this episode, I'm going to be taking some recycled trash, some things that I probably would have just threw away, and trying to see what I can turn it into. So I'm thinking I have this dowel, this cardboard dowel. It's a little thicker than your normal paper towel or toilet paper dowel. So I think this came in a roll of um, some heavy duty uh, carpet. I don't know, my mom had it and she was gonna throw it away. And I said, uh, I'll take it because I like to recycle stuff and see what I can make of it. So that's the base of it. And then I'm going to take this corrugated cardboard which I use this a lot when I'm making like um, corrugated sheet metal or when you're making a storm door. I did it for my Sentinel in the warehouse, but this is great. You can take any piece of cardboard and peel off the top layer to get this corrugated material here. You can also buy sheets of this at the craft store. So at Hobby Lobby, Michaels, they sell this in sheets in different colors. Um, so this is store-bought, but if you are doing this on a budget and you have a cardboard box, just peel this off. So really, I'm just going to go through the steps. This is going to be an easy diorama. I'm going to roll this around, and then I'm going to make some tops and bottoms for it, and then make some columns so I can have a display for some of the figures that, you know, maybe they don't fit into like your normal modern day setting. So this will be a great display for them. So let's get to it. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is take this corrugated cardboard and just hot glue it to this dowel. This is pretty easy. I just keep laying down lines of glue and rolling the corrugated cardboard as I go. So pretty simple, just rinse and repeat and do this until you're done with all of your columns. Now I'm just going to cut some basic shapes. I'm going to do about one inch by about an inch and a half. And this is really just so I can make a base bottom and I'll do about two layers. I'll do one square, one round. I'll use my hot wire cutter tool. Um, I'll just cut a few more sheets and then I'll cut out the circular pieces as well. Now that I have all my base pieces cut, I'm just going to go ahead and hot glue them together and then I will hot glue the dowel on. So after that's done, I'm pretty much done with the columns other than painting and I'll move on to the next steps. So I filled each of the dowels with a beam of foam and I'm just going to cut it just to make it look rough and then I'm going to cover it with some compound. This way it'll look like some broken concrete, it'll give me some nice texture once I paint it and it will look great when I dry brush. So this was really just going to be an episode about making columns but I thought why not go ahead and make a base and a backdrop for it? So 
I'm gonna go ahead and start magnetizing my base and then I'm gonna magnetize both sides of the backdrop so I can make it reversible. And once everything is magnetized, I'm taking the base of this diorama and I'm making one inch by one inch floor tiles. This way, it'll look a little bit like ruins. I'll put some cracks in it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do one inch by two inch, almost center blocks for the stone work on the walls. I cut out this piece of foam core that I'm gonna use as the door. So I'm just making sure that I'm tracing that so I don't make the line work and do some extra work and put the lines where the door will go. So I can save some time there, just doing some random stonework design around the door frame, and then I'll do my lines. So now I'm going to try something that I've never done before. I'm taking my hot wire wand and I'm just deepening the lines. I usually just use a nail punch to do that, but I want the lines to be a little deeper. One thing I'll say is make sure that you're wearing a vapor mask when melting foam. I wasn't wearing one this time and I should have been, so lesson learned. That's just something that I wanna make sure that I'm emphasizing is to be safe when you're scoring your lines with hot tools. So I paint some half inch spaces on that piece of foam core to act as some wood for the door. And now I'm just gonna take this steel wire brush and just do some light strokes to give it that wood grain texture. So I'll just keep doing this until I have a nice texture on it. And that'll look really great once you dry brush um, the light colored brown on top of the dark colored brown. So I did make some metal cross beams and I'm just hot gluing these dots on there just to make it look like they're bolted to the door. So this will just add a nice little extra detail. I'm gonna use just a regular pony bead as a doorknob. I wish I had a hoop. Um, I don't have that on hand, but I can always add that on later. So for now, I'll just use that pony bead and I'll show you the door once it's glued on. As always, I'm gonna add my black acrylic and Mod Podge sealant coat, and this will just be a nice protectant for the foam before I can start my painting. And I got a little carried away, so I took all of the painting off camera, but it came out pretty cool. I did a base coat of gray. I did some dry brushing with green, which was something I've never done before, but I wanted to look mossy. I added some flocking to the base and the columns, and the door got some brown, silver, and light brown dry brush. So everything came out pretty cool. So I would say this is almost done. So like I said, this diorama will be reversible. So now that the ancient ruin side is done, let's flip it over and work on the other side. So I'm going to do another galaxy backdrop. I've done it in previous episodes, but I really want to give a proper tutorial for this. So just so you get a good view of how I do it, I apply all the paints first. I just put little dots of colors. I'm using mostly purples and blues, and I'm having it fade into each other. And then I'm gonna take a sponge and just dab it all across until I get that nice galaxy pattern. All right, folks, here it is, my ancient ruin diorama. This really was only supposed to be a prop video where I make those columns, but I decided to make a backdrop, make some floor, and go ahead and make a door. So that was a last minute detail, but I'm happy I did it. Um, let's get a few figures on and see how it looks. So here I have my Marvel Legends Hercules, and he looks pretty great here. I didn't really measure the door. I didn't try and scale anything, so it looks pretty well scaled and I'm happy about that. So he could just be standing in front of a really big door. 
but overall this diorama is built for characters like this. Now I have a few more characters that would fit in this space that I've been waiting to unbox to have a proper diorama or backdrop to reveal them, but for now I'm just going to show off Hercules. So pretty cool. I'm going to show you one more feature of this diorama before we wrap up this episode. Okay, so now I did make this diorama reversible because I wanted to have the option to either display that medieval door backdrop or I can have some characters staring off into space. Overall, I just wanted a different bit backdrop that I can just flip it around and depending on what I want to display, um, I have two options now. So pretty cool. So with my Loki and Sylvie figures, I can kind of recreate that scene from the end of the show um, after Sylvie and Loki meet Kang. They're kind of staring off into the galaxy and you know it's just one of those things it's like you can have a lot of fun with these dioramas and i really think with this one you know i i can really just display however i want but i thought this was pretty cool so i'm gonna switch around and then you know every now and then if i'm feeling like changing the side i can go ahead and do that so pretty cool so guys this is it this was really just a one day build so this took me a few hours all together i did break it up between a few days, but I was really only working on it for like an hour at a time. So I'm gonna say all in all, this took me about three to four hours. So that's really not too bad. I went in with the intentions of just making these columns and I decided might as well make a base. So I did some things that never did before. I did some things that I'm pretty used to. So, I mean, line work and brick work is pretty easy. I never actually did like one inch by one inch um, ground tile to make it look like uh, just medieval kind of ground landscape and then I never made a door out of wood so I think that came out pretty cool that's probably one of my favorite parts of the diorama especially since it wasn't something I planned but um these columns this was a great first try for me so really easy this took maybe an hour altogether so you're really just waiting for the paint to dry but all in all that's it and that does it for this episode, folks. If you like this content, leave a like, hit subscribe, and ring that bell so you get notifications of when I post my next episode. Until then, we'll catch you next time.